Hey guys, welcome back to the Fortnite channel. This is gonna be a very, very good video. I'm so excited for this video, guys. This is something that I had a discussion with the student with, and he wanted to learn how to play endgame like day because he was a controller player. And I really showed him, right? I showed him the very specific things he does because obviously game sense is transferable from a controller player and even to a keyboard and mouse player, but there's certain things that controller players can't do, so they have to play differently. Like for example, scroll wheel reset is just not an option on controller, and neither is 180 and quickly, right? You can't turn around quickly. So you sort of have to employ a different playstyle. And we're gonna be taking a quick dive on how day plays very specific to controllers so if you're a controller player you can learn and even if you're a pc keyboard and mouse player this is going to be helpful for you regardless so pay attention there's a lot of game sense in here a lot of really good material a lot of valuable stuff that you can learn for duos because day plays with a really good player named tk they're both very very talented obviously you know day and i think this is going to be a solid video for you guys to learn about moving zones learn about impacts and learn about all these things that regarding duos and know how to play together that way so pay attention to this video write notes i very much encourage it if you have questions leave them in the comments i'll catch you guys later peace okay so this is where the video actually starts crouch walking looks for a beam to start the fight actually ends up getting the knock this should be very easy at this point 2v1 dk is actually really far but days is good enough to actually go for a place but here what is he doing why does he not stand here very simple concept uh, right hand peak yep right hand peak but diagonal box fighting allows you to place this wall it's really hard for me to draw 3d but i'm gonna try this wall right here if you can see this yep see that horrible drawing but whatever if you step backwards behind this line right here you are able to place a wall so then in that case what that allows them to do if you're diagonal box fighting meaning diagonal box fighting in case you don't know is you stand here and then you swing on this wall instead of standing here right and then this is going to help you sort of be in a situation where you can shoot and then build instead of having to just you know just like this so then it's instantaneous it's really nice but like like you said as well you get a right hand beat. this guy's completely screwed okay so let's talk about why he doesn't just jump in okay in the area that he is in the enemy the only way the enemy can go without breaking a wall is this way like out towards yeah. day so you can't go out because those are natural builds from yeah. the map you can't really leave anywhere else dave knows this they totally knows yeah. this so he's playing really safe because he knows what the opponent's gonna do the only way day loses this fight is by double swinging this and getting caught off guard so knowing that day's playing really careful right he's, look how left he is right now he can't even place this wall if he wanted to because he's so far left so he's just playing really safe pulled out his gun expecting it just waiting because he knows what's coming and then he just goes for the shot he doesn't even go for the reset because he knows tk is on the side and he just knows that the hp advantage is too much so let's just end the fight don't need to complicate it with the reset or anything so he just goes for a shot of course day being good as he is he just hits the shot like that's really nice but the biggest thing is know like what your opponent's options are like if you really think about it like you'll actually play a lot better because if they only have one or two options then you know how to play it accordingly tk gets hit a lot i don't know how much damage tk did but Day has a nice angle on the side where he gets like another 100 damage. So it brings the fight back to equal. TK should look to heal or like look to pressure at the very least. He breaks this wall, right? He notices this wall right here on the side because this is a two by one inside here. This wall on the inside is not taken. So if you hug this wall, like this line right here, and the way you can do that is hold W against this thing right here. You see this? You hold W against that, you'll be the perfect distance to actually place this wall, edit it, and then just sit here and spray, right? Because there's no pieces that this guy can place, the opponent. If you can barely see the opponent, sitting right here yeah yep. right so like he won't have anything to place so you can just spray at him and that's exactly what day does which is really nice he even has if you really pay attention i go back slightly he's just right handing everything like this is the thing that i think a lot of people that come into coaching and in esports are and my coaching as well it's just like they fail to recognize that you just need to right hand stuff man like just stop left handing stop dry peeking just right hand stuff and create angles that's just better for you Right, and obviously aim and all those other things matter as well. But if you start with that one concept, I think you'll actually be a lot more successful. So the first step, he places the floor here so he can actually move more left, right? That's going to help him get a right hand peek on this section right here. That's what he's doing. Yeah. He's using that little piece of wall to actually right hand peek like this. So half his body is literally covered. So if the guy even goes for a play, he's literally screwed. There we go. Good shot. Key piece control tactic that you should be using all the time is always place the cones first because it's easier to cone than wall than it is to wall edit cone. Makes sense? And then you have to reset afterwards too. So always place these cones first. It's a good habit for any sort of piece control move. Just spam cones everywhere and then place walls after. So it's a better order. These fights are really nice. They're not just basic fights. Good three, two, one. Something to note about the MK7 is you need to pull down on it to keep the recoil in check because it's it's like CSGO in a way like that. So you just need to make sure you're pulling down on the ADS so that your crosshair stays in the same place. If you just left click or right trigger, like you're not going to have a good time because it's just going to recoil up. Go up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you're not going to have a good shot. Mm -hmm. okay, it's really, really hard to hold stairs. And even if you do, a lot of bullets phase through. So mm -hmm. they seeing this, because seeing that this wall's already edited, which they shouldn't have been in a box like this, but they are, so whatever. They notices this and takes advantage of it. it just sprays at the, the ramp. You're going to get so much damage yep right 
And then, wow. Okay, this is really, really good awareness. I didn't even see this. He notices the other guy just running at him right here. The only option in this case would be to place a wall to his left and go out. But notice the key thing. You shouldn't just run out because if you run out, you get full boxed. You should yeah. place the wall, defensive piece control, and then run out. And that's the way you can get out. You might get hit in the process, but you didn't do it. So you, he's actually really close to getting boxed, but I think it would have been a better play. Yeah. And he still got the other wall. So yeah. Yep. So he tried to build and he just got boxed in every single way. Yeah, he almost got boxed twice. And the main reason is, is he, he didn't build himself. So if he, if he built this wall and then made like a door or even like a left hand at it, like in this corner, <laughs> the other guy won't be able to follow him as easily. And he's going to be able to get out. He should do that and then reset. Maybe it's harder on controller. I'm not entirely sure, but I just think it's the best play. So I think they missed out there, but it's okay. It's like a very in the moment deal, like getting rushed at like that. So I totally understand. So TK is getting pushed. Day comes back to help him. Notice how he doesn't splash. He passes with TK. And then they're going to go key again. It's a, it's a 2v1 right now. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that that guy has right hand peak because 2v1 takes precedence over right hand peak. Yep. Always. Doesn't really matter. Like if you have a 2v1 and you're really close to each other, you should always go for the play. Okay, this is very obvious display. This is, this is pretty self-explanatory. 25 white, right? So if you see the white number, you know you have a huge advantage. You should then close the gap. Make sure the spacing is actually really close to each other. So then if you know that this wall is empty, you should try to break the wall, place the wall. If you notice if you place the wall, this guy won't be able to hold the wall. Like yeah, because yeah, he should have placed it at first, but then yeah. the guy got it first. But yes. Then he broke it, yeah. yeah, yeah, they got it first, which means then the guy can't turbo build. And then as soon as they crosses that wall where the slot is, like where that guy's trying to hold, then they like not in trouble anymore. You can easily get it. It's pretty easy. Next fight. TV one peak together. They're going to try to take this wall, the floor. It's really sketch though, because if they edit really fast, then... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, was... I, I like that TK goes for a different angle here. They're both speak. So what happened was TK calmed that he hit like 100. And then Day got a, another 100 damage on the other kid. So that's literally huge HP advantage across the board. So in this case, you yeah. should both get in from both ends. So that's what Day does. They're both calming, getting in, which is really clear. Like that both, both of them are trying to do it. Good piece by Day and it's really easy kill. It's so simple, right? It literally comes out to HP advantage, both in solos and duos, like, duos especially. And I feel like you should really worry about that fact and try to use that to your advantage. Like if you have a big HP advantage, end the fight. Let, let, let's get it done, right? don't want to sort of sit there and keep taking peaks when they're really low obviously it'll come down to the fact that you have you need good aim when you get in so that's why people tell you to practice aim because it's like really important to have good aim even on controller it's really important to to be reliable and not miss your shots because if you do then you can't really get in that was a really nice patience right there do you, do you see this this is really nice yep, yep, yep. hits him and then gets the cone uses a shotgun and then waits look what he's saying perfect movement by the way look how he stops he knows exactly where he needs to stop so that this guy sees can't see him right now this guy can't see him at all maybe barely like this this section of his body but even if the yeah, guy hits him hits him for 20 like whatever all right so i let's... recently started doing that a lot too and mm -hmm. it's so good like, it's really know, nice yeah like, like i finish a lot of fights without even taking one damage just because of that it's just because of your peak just because of your movement yeah. yeah exactly and the goal is like what i know that you're able to do it once or twice the goal is to be able to do it literally every fight that's why Dave's so good is because he's able to exploit those angles so he's not building a lot because he only has 15 built so he needs to just like yep aim that's literally it yeah. 2v1 now because of that kill tk is really low though Day's is the healthy one so they should take the lead and taking this fight to be honest otherwise tk gets knocked but Day's in the front nice to get a service paid they should build on this gotta get the loot there you go nice pinch here gonna spin his back focuses on blocking his back off instead of continuing the fight he's crazy Day is crazy for that. Why this is a good play if you have good aim and awareness and understanding of like what to do in the moment if something goes wrong. Let me explain why this is really nice. So what he sees, right, is a wood tarp coming from the metal. He sees a wood tarp. This right here, this guy is the tarper, which means yep. the other guy is somewhere here, here, or here. Like behind yeah. him, he's, he's trailing behind. So if you know yeah. this is the tarper and he's going to be ahead, if you jump in and place this wall, you have now split him up and you can take your one on that kid in the back, right? Yeah. As long as you understand, like, in all the different scenarios that could happen, the things that could go wrong yeah. in this sort of situation, what to do, they will come out on top. He will have that surprise factor on the second kid. And not only that, as long as TK is following him, he can potentially turn it into a 2v1 eventually, right? He's going to block up that other kid and then go for the shot. He uses the stair to block up that other kid and then takes the one. And then immediately his priority is not to loot. Like, that's stupid. Let's, let's, get, let's block up that teammate. Right. As soon as you get that knock, not only is this guy invulnerable for a little bit, so let's not worry about yeah. him. Let's block the other kid off. Because that's the, like, what do you think this guy's calming? In my box, in my box, in my box. So then this guy is going to turn around and look at you, right? Mm -hmm. So then your biggest priority needs to be to block him off. And then he notices as he's blocking him off that the guy's in his box. 
So he comms to TK in my box. And what does he do? He doesn't edit because this guy is currently spraying at him with an SMG or an MK7 and just spamming AR into his stair. So the best thing to do is to wait and let TK edit on the side like this to take it because obviously this guy's crosshair is on day like this right so you would rather someone else to take the fight because then they would have like really off crosshair placement so just wait for tk essentially it'd be really simple and it works out really nice pike gets chopped out by tk really low so he just sprays he doesn't do anything complicated you don't need to you don't need to full box here if they just have low hp just spam like you'll you'll get so many kills that way especially in this meta he gets beamed a lot it's a 2v2 TK gets a lot of damage. He stops healing and goes for an angle because he notices that yep. like TK needs help. He's probably gonna. Oh my god. Oh my god. He hits that hard shot. What? Dude, this yeah. is what's crazy. It's like days different. Like, right? Those clutch ups are like, I don't know. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy that like that guy like it, it looked like he phased through his wall and his ramp. Yep, he did. He did literally. And yep. uh, he still hits the shot that, that's what, like my aim is so important because it literally gets you out of a situation where you should be dead and there's so many situations where day should be dead but he's so good at what he does micro wise yeah that it just works out it genuinely just works out okay let's watch this this section right here this section was actually really good by him he takes the aim duel wins but he's effectively 50 hp so he's not up but he's holding this is the same situation as last time when there's a kid under his stair. So he's holding because this guy's looking at him. Let TK come in on the side. As soon as this guy's head turns towards the right, you make an edit. Yeah. Right? And so that's what's going to happen. This guy turns. You see him? He's literally looking this way at TK. But then yeah. Dave's going to make an edit. Go for a shot. Reset. Hold. But this guy runs at TK, which is lucky yeah. the best play. He's in such a bad position that he needs to just like run at one of them. Oh, uh, this is this tells us a lot. Okay, so like day comms get in because he sees that it's a 2v1 and tk's right beside him and then tk starts screaming his teammate his teammate meaning his yeah. teammates right there so like watch out that jumping in is not yeah. a good idea anymore so then day sprays outwards like he tries to get out yeah. he's doing damage to the guy at the same time but he, he tries to get out 2v2 jump in is it's not smart 2v1 jump in sure he's burning maps like who cares right if you get an impact, the worst thing you could do genuinely is die. So if you need to use mats to get ahead, use them. Who cares? Like, be safe about it if you, if you get an impact. They should jump in together and they'll kill. If you knock one of them, whoever's in the tarp, this teammate will just be a solo for sure. They're really good mats. So they should go front side. The reason why they're taking low ground right here, it's very obvious. So if we see the zone, right? If we look at how the zone worked, it's literally like this. This is what it looks like literally on the mini map this is the second zone right this is this right here so what happened is where's dead side here uh right this side yeah why because everybody's gonna be trying to go ahead and rotating no okay so yeah that's a small thing that you should understand so first of all these are like the static zones where like the white circle is right so that's the first thing second thing this is like 50 50 i think this is the better way to do it 50 50 this is the end of first moving, end of second moving, okay? So my point is a lot of people, especially in a no mobility meta, will do this, right? And we only have launch pads for mobility, basically what it is, what I'm trying to hit that. Basically what they'll do is they'll get into zone and then because they want to conserve mats, what ends up happening is this side is actually congested because no one wants to go into the front half because that's just an extra waste of mat. They'll go like a little bit deeper, maybe here, but they won't go further than that, right? Which means this side is congested, makes sense? So that means there's no one here literally yeah on the left side left side is dead this is dead side okay which means because the next zone pulls double max and what i mean by that is if it pulls left and then next zone pulls left again okay yeah. that means that if you have enough mats and you're really fast about it you can claim low ground because no one's in front makes sense right so let's let's compare it with, with a different scenario let's say it pulls back can you take low ground no there's builds all over here you can't really take low ground at all because there's so many builds how are you supposed to take low ground yeah. but in this section of the map right here there's no builds right yeah. so you should literally just do this you should be here oh it pulls max yeah, i have a lot of mats because of the impacts that i just found i just got like two two team kills let me mm -hmm. take low ground let me jump ahead and go into the empty space where i know there's no builds here and then start mm -hmm. dropping low and we can talk about the advantages of the low ground the advantages of the low ground are number one you don't have to place floor on the bottom number two you're not getting pinched vertically by someone below you because you are the lowest layer and number three you will get top two because usually what ends up happening in team game modes is that low ground and high ground spray at everyone in the middle and everyone in mid ground dies first and then high ground low ground fights each other at the end 
and if you can do that obviously the fight is a whole different story at the very end but you will guarantee top two if you can hold low ground the whole way so low ground is a very easy non-risk like safe way to take it obviously height can get greed sometimes with launch pads in the meta so height is a little bit more volatile but you should try to take low ground if you want a safe way to get top two and get really good placement so whenever you're playing moving zones literally right your objective should just be to take low or height right but low is a lot more common and a lot more easier to do so i yeah. suggest that for you guys for sure especially in team game mode low is not really common in solos so yeah don't try to think about that too much in solos i think height is way stronger but in team game mode duos trios low ground and high ground is the layers you want i don't know why they don't drop they should totally drop i think they literally forgot about it because if you go back they literally call me right here ah okay there we go there's the answer do you see it yeah there's people under the very good right here someone has low ground so it would be stupid to just literally try to run into their walls and try to take it in head. That was really nice because I didn't see that the first time I watched the water view, like right now. And he saw it in the middle of a tournament. Like he, he has all the stresses and reasons to be nervous right now. And, and just like be like hyped or, or adrenaline. So he's playing the tournament in the moment and he saw that. That's how good his awareness is. And it's really nice. So they, they have no leverage to take low ground because someone got ahead. So that pro team like did a really good job of getting ahead before them. Pressuring them off their lair to get them off their lair. They need to get ahead and box, but it's 2v1, so they should win. There you go. He gets another 200 wood. Daycoms, you can claim low? I don't think so. It's this exact same situation as what we saw before. So they get this kill, another impact, right? So you should look at thinking about, oh, I have more mats now, so I can look at taking one of the power layers. The problem is, again, someone's on low, right? So then you don't want to take it anyway. It makes no sense. So especially when you don't have hearts, like they only have wood, like they can't really do anything. That team is really hard claiming low. So do you see what's happening to them now? It's getting to the point where there's only 14 people in the game. And now mid ground is getting sprayed by height. Yeah. Right. So now they're getting destroyed. This is this is the problem. Like you should have taken low before this time of the game so that you don't get focused by height. And I think that what they'll try to do is, is literally fight the team at low because that's their win condition. They're getting sprayed up below by low ground. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Right. Around this stage of the game, mid ground gets completely griefed by low ground and high ground that's what happens if you don't have one of the power layers that's what's gonna happen to you if they see a solo behind them i think that's their best play to find an impact they should try to maybe look for that but look what happens where does it pull you see it? it yes so it's triple max that's why i call mm -hmm. it right it pulls front again which means that side is, is is on the back which means you can yeah if you're fast enough you can claim low in front of these guys the only problem mm -hmm. is day only has 180 wood which isn't really that good uh, I yeah. wonder if TK has enough hearts and understands that it pulls triple max to take low here. Based on the way they're playing, I think he doesn't have mats. I don't yeah. think he does, I, I, honestly. He's oh, they need shotgun. to kill this team. If they kill this team, they have low. That's huge, 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 huge. That team had no mats. They need to go up because of the terrain. So that's the issue. This is why endgame is so hard, right? It's because... Yeah. Okay, so I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. So first of all, they get the kill on low. The problem is the zone goes like this. If you're going yeah, this way. They, they need to get There's up, otherwise they die, right? Yeah. So that's one thing. And then as they're going up, they notice a type like right here, right? So someone has low again. <laughs> so they understand that and then takes layer two. Like he takes this yeah. layer right here because he has no choice. Like if someone has low, you can't just like force into them. Like, yeah, unless yeah. you like sneak into the tarp, that's a different story. But like, you can't just like take low beside them. They're gonna agree for you. They understand the power of that layer. Right, so he just goes ahead doesn't care if there's doubles under him as long as you can get past it fast enough and then take doubles on top so if yep. you can take doubles on top like this code maybe even place doubles here and here then this guy might be cut off you might be able to take low in front of them after if they can't walk forward they should they should jump in they should jump in crack 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 yeah you, you should totally kill them get up oh uh, someone's low gun yeah yeah now you get up for sure get out of here <laughs> so there's four people on low gun right in that case if you stay where you are uh in the middle of that tarp you're probably gonna get pinched Good kill on Donnie. Oh, he's not even carrying a shotgun, holy. Yeah, 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 he dropped it completely. Day has missed. He should have missed either after or... He has mats. Okay, good. Yeah. He can clutch this. He has height. That other kid... Oh. Oh! No way. Shut up. No, 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 no. No way he wins this. I, I don't even think he wins this. Yeah, yeah he doesn't. Uh, he got grief fight, too. The solo is in front of zone in the better spot. That last game, seriously, was there was a lot of things you can learn from that competitive wise. What? The problem is people don't watch these videos in an analytical way. They watch them as like entertainment while eating lunch or like just chilling, which is fine to w yeah. watch while eating lunch. Just ask yourself the right question. Like, why are they doing these certain things? And what is like the pro and con of doing this? Like, wh why are they yeah. like doing this? Like, why is Day thinking this way? Day knows what he's doing. So does TK. They're good players, right? So if you just watch them and trust what they're doing, like you can learn a lot. 
right? And I think like with the amount of stupid amount of videos, right? Like there's so many videos on their gameplay, like on YouTube, you can learn a lot. You could learn so much, right? Yep. And I think that's what people really need to do, honestly. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And more importantly, hope you guys learned something new. Thank you so much for supporting my channels these days. It's been really, really good. And I have some very, very nice videos coming out soon. Stay tuned for that. And in January and in 2022, I'm going to make sure this channel blows up. I'm going to make sure all you guys learn stuff. And hopefully all you guys eventually make money in solo cash cups and trio cash cups. Like we got, we got what, 30 days? We got 30 days to prepare for solo cash cups. I think that every single one of you watching this video really needs to take it seriously and grind, guys. Like, let's practice. Let's really make sure we're prepared for solo cash cup. And it will take 30 days to, for you to actually get to a good spot. Like, if the exam is in 30 days, the exam being the solo cash cup, you need to start studying early if you want to succeed, right? So you have so much time to really fix up all those inaccuracies, all those mistakes, and really get prepared, right? Like, so start now. Start grinding solo arena six to eight hours a day. If you have the opportunity to do that, you should be doing it. And I think you guys will be really really happy that you did it once it comes down to solo cash cup time and i really think fncs as well the same applies right like you really need to be making sure you're getting better at the game whether it's you know watching my videos whether it's actually practicing in game doing routines aim training kovacs aim duels all these things are going to help you succeed uh, in these upcoming tournaments so thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and i'll see you guys in the next video